Hello, good day to Sir Wanzul Adli bin Wan Mokta. I am Nuna Lazatu Akila binti Masuri from group 10, followed by my other two group members, namely Loretta and Felisla. For our video assignment, we have chose two types of sundial, which is horizontal sundial and equatorial bow sundial. My task is I'm going to firstly explain about the history of sundial. So, the history of sundial is the earliest type of timekeeping device which is indicates the time of day by the position of the shadow of some object exposed to the sun's ray. As the day progresses, the sun moves across the sky, causing the shadow of the object to move and indicating the passage of time. Next, I want to explain about the history of horizontal sundial. This sundial was made by Christopher Collins, an Irish immigrant, surveyor, and inventor. Collins established a scientific instrument business in New York in the middle of 1780, and this sundial was one of his products. This dial, mounted horizontally, shows the hours at a fixed location. In contrast to a portable pocket dial, a traveler might carry from place to place. So the next one is the history about equatorial bow sundial. This sundial is in our southern hemisphere. The sun moves south of the celestial equator during the summer half of the year and north of the celestial equator during the winter half of the year. The dial plate of an equatorial sundial lies precisely in the plane of the equator, which means that the summer shadow falls on only uppermost face of the equatorial plate of the sundial, while the winter shadow falls on only the underneath face. Our markings must therefore be made on both upper and lower surface when the dial is in the form of a solid flat plate with a rod no more such as that shown above. The equatorial plate sundial at Wayala is of this time. Hi, my name is Larita Tening and today I am going to explain about my parts which is horizontal sundial. So for horizontal sundial, it will show the time whenever the sun is above the horizon. The design requires a flat horizontal dial plate with our lines. The shadow of Norman facing on the hour lines indicates the time. As you can see, the picture over here is showing one of the examples of horizontal sundial. So now we are heading to the working principle of sundial. So this is my sundial. How does horizontal sundial work? This is the common sundial where when the sun moves in the sky, the shadow of the stick moves accordingly and we can measure time by the movement of the shadow around the stick. So as you can see over here, this is the stick and this is the shadow and the reading will be taken where the shadow landed at the hour line. The normal of the Horizontal sundial must be parallel to the axis of the rotation of the Earth and point to north in the northern hemisphere or to south in the southern hemisphere so that the sundial is accurate. To set the nomen parallel to the Earth axis of the rotation, we need to know the latitude of our location. Latitude is the angle that varies from 0 to 90 degrees north and south of the equator. Uh, please take note that the measurement can be not accurate due to the axis of rotation of the earth is tilted. That is why the normal is usually at some angle to the horizontal dial plate. Now, I am going to explain about the construction process. To make this horizontal sundial, things that we need are protector, compass, pencil, glue, stick, colored paper, and mounting board. So, the first step is to draw a circle using the compass and it can be any size but in this video, our diameter is 18 cm. So, second step, draw a semicircle using a compass and it must, it must be slightly smaller than the circle that we have drew earlier. In this case, our radius is 6 cm. After drawing the semicircle, draw a straight line to connect the semicircle. As you can see here, I am drawing the semicircle using a compass and we connect the line using a ruler. 
And then the third step is to draw a 90 degree angle first, then 45 degree for each section. So for the fourth step is in the 45 degree section, divide it into 15 degree section. It is because each hour line is 15 degree angle. So the fifth step is draw a smaller circle in the center so that we can insert the stick. The sixth step is glue the semicircle on the round mounting board and insert the stick inside the hole. The stick indicates the pole. And last but not least, our sandal is done and place it on a surface that exposed to the sunlight and the result is taken by observing where the shadow is landed. Now is for the result. The result for the first interval is taken on 12th December 2022. For the first reading, the result was taken at 9am. For the second reading was 10am. And third reading was 11am. And the fourth reading was at 12pm. As you can see, the length of the shadow is getting shorter when the time increase. Next is the result for second interval which is taken on 2nd January 2023. The first reading was taken at 1 p.m. Second reading is 2 p.m. Reading 3 is at 3 p.m. And reading 4 was at 5 p.m. You can't see the shadow really appear at this time because uh, of the weather factors, the sun is not really bright at that hour, so that is why the shadow is not really opaque at this time. This is the end of part A, horizontal sandal. Now I am going to pass to the next presenter, which is Felicia, to explain more about equilateral sandal. Thank you. Thank you, Loretta, for the brief information on horizontal sandal. Next, my name is Felicia Mipao and I'm going to explain about the second type of sandal that my group has chosen, which is the equatorial ball sandal. As you can see, this is the structure of the equatorial ball sandal which we have assembled, which is, consists of equatorial rings, the gnomon, the hour lines, and the base. For equatorial sandals, the shadow falls on the equatorial ring that is parallel to the equator of the earth. For this design, we need to create a curved plate like this and it needs to be relatively thin but strong. Next, I am going to explain about the working principle of the Emelary sandal. An equatorial ring sandal has hours marking inscribed on the inside of the pressuring instead of on the surfaces of a solid plate as the horizontal sandal previously. As the sun travels across the sky, the gnomon are usually in the shape of an arrow in which a shadow line will be casted on the hour dials on the ring. The amenary then should be calibrated by aligning the arrow which acts as the gnomon to the true knot. The true knot was determined by using the compass application on a mobile device. Once the angle of the arrow is established to the true knot, the pedestal is fixed vertically. The horizontal and vertical reading should be often adjusted along with the best wave required. Theoretically, we expected the result when the sandal is pointed to the true north direction. The shadow of the normal should be casted on the owl dials. Proceedingly, the construction process of the emery sandal was not hard. The materials needed were sandal template, scissors, cutter, a stick, and a mounting board to make the equatorial ball sandal relatively thin, which we previously used a foam board, but it was a little bit too thick for to obtain accurate result. So the first step is the template of the equatorial sandal was printed from the website and stick to the mounting board by using a glue paper so that the pieces are more durable. The cutout was then assembled pieces by pieces by referring to the steps on YouTube video source. The assembled sandal was then placed at a field location which is truly exposed to the sunlight to obtain the hour readings. To obtain the result for the equatorial ball sandal, I choose one day in a week for four consecutive weeks. So on the first Friday in the first week, on 23rd December of 2002, I was taking a reading on 14.32 hours, but the sandal time shadow shows that it is 14 and 25 hours. And the next Friday in the second week, on the 30th December of 2022, the time on the clock was 14.40 hours, but the sundial time shows 
1400 hours. So according to John 2022, even if the sundial is perfectly aligned to the true north direction, it is expectable to notice that the time on the dial is not the same time that is on the watch. The reason this happened is because of the conventions used to measure times in modern times. That's all from me, thank you. So let's go through our discussion. While doing these assignments, we have some errors. So how to overcome our errors is, the first error is the reading is not accurate when the measurement is taken. The ways to overcome that error is, use a digital compass to determine the north direction and make sure that the stick is headed to the true north pole. The next error is the shadow cannot be seen opaquely due to weather factors and tall building. How to overcome the errors is choose a day where the weather is good and choose an open space where no other shadows can interrupt. The reason of why our result likes Felicia and Loretta has said just now it is because the sun is directly above the sundial's location so it means only a small shadow or no shadow will be cleared or cast. Last but not least, our conclusion is the shadow created by the sundial got smaller as the time approached 12 noon. As the day progressed, the shadow began to grow in size as the time in the evening hours grew closer. That's all is from us. Thank you.